Hello everybody. I'm out on a nice little nature hike. This one should be a fairly short one. I'll try to do these in the morning so that I don't have to put up with too much heat. And I'm also, this is obviously part of my video for you on, on camping. You need to make sure that if you're going to go hiking on trails that you're physically able to do that and that you take along the essentials. I'll do that in a little bit and show you what I've got. And I think one thing that I usually forget to tell people because I can look at these things and pretty much figure it out, but you need to have a map of where you're going to go. These trails pretty much are self-contained. You're not going to end up Starting off in one state and ending up in the next or anything like that. And if you ever totally just don't know what to do, you can always turn around and just follow the trail back from where you came from. The sun is obviously behind me. You get a little bit further into the trees here so that I don't keep messing with my video. If I could sing, I'd sing you a song that we did with the scouts. Uh, I was a scoutmaster, but I was not the main guy. The main guy could sing, well, carry a tune a little bit better than I can, that's for sure. And he would sing Follow Me Boys. There's a movie by that name. Fred McMurray was basically playing the founder of the scouts, Baden Powell. It was a really good idea, and for many years it stayed a good idea until the government and their new new system that they're trying to cram down everybody's throat came in and changed it. So right now I'm not part of it. They should have just basically said, we either do it our way or we don't do it at all. Don't compromise with evil. But anyhow, it's a pretty area. Got a little creek next to me here. When you're out like this, uh, it might be a little easier out west, but it depends on where you're at. You don't drink the water. You could filter it and drink it, but don't drink it straight. You could boil it, put iodine in it, do a number of different things, but. There's very little out here that you should be getting involved in. You have to be an expert in some things to know how to know what you can eat. This is a damp environment. There's mushrooms everywhere. Don't eat mushrooms unless you are an expert. And a hundred percent, and I mean a hundred percent, sure of what you're going to be eating. Because many are poisonous and deadly. You don't have to even take very much of a bite. You find yourself deadly sick out here. So you don't eat you don't eat stuff out here unless you can, like I said, 100 percent My last campsite, I was enjoying blueberries that were around the visitor center. And they told me I could have them and I they told me they were blueberries, and of course I recognized them. But sometimes there's counterfeit plants that kind of look like what you think they are, and they're not. So you got to be careful. And of course you got to watch for other types of plants. You can run into poison oak here in the south. Some places further north you can get into poison ivy. It won't kill you, but sometimes you wish you were dead sometimes, and you get covered in that stuff. If I get a lot of it bad times, I sometimes have to take medicine for it. Because it seems like it gets in your bloodstream and transfers all over the place. But it's just, it's an oil and you got to stop it. So I, in my pack, I don't have it with me because I don't have any problem right now. But I have calamine lotion I can put on. Because you're going to itch. And there's, you know stinging nettles and other kinds of plants that you can get into. 
Let's see, what do we got here? I have a sign telling me about the bird, brown thrasher, and I have a sign telling me which directions I can go. So I am going to have to put this down, look at my map, and see which way I should go. Mountain Creek Trail, well, it says that's the 3.2 mile loop. Okay. I'm going to go to the right. I'm not sure what's going straight. They don't have a sign pointing that way. It says there's a park. There's some kind of play stuff on it for kids. Huh. I'm too big for that. I showed us kids on the seesaw. So I'm going this way. I'm over a little bridge over this creek that we're wandering along. And all trails are marked. How they mark them may be slightly different, but once you figure it out, they're consistent enough. This is the red trail. So that red on that tree tells me that. So, and that's the one I started on. And they had a branch in the early part of it take off and it was white. And that just goes over to the other campsite. So the other campsite can come down and be part of this trail. It's fairly quiet in here. I can hear people talking somewhere, so I'm not too far from civilization. Might be other hikers, I don't know, but... I enjoy this. I can, I can do this literally all day and you'd be totally bored, so... I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm going to put it together with my other little videos and then I'll go ahead and post it. I don't need to do this right away because I just... Tomorrow's video is a camping video. But I'm out here camping, so I decided to just go ahead and film this. And it'll be in a few days. I'm not going to put it up right now. But I want everybody to learn how to camp. Because I think if we don't get raptured, more people than not are going to have to do this. There's more homeless people around than need to be. And if you can see that coming along, you may need to be proactive and go out and start camping. Save your money from paying rent if you're gonna if you're gonna get evicted eventually. Save your money. Okay, I see people on the trail, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and hope to see you out here sometime. Sometime before we get raptured. <laughs> Hello everybody. I'm out here hiking. I've got two agendas to do today. I've gotta to complete this three or four mile hike around the park. And I'm going to do a little bit of talking about this to go along with my Camping 101 series that I'm doing. And then I'm also going to do a video for the lesson. Uh, I've already got one camping video up ready to be released tomorrow. So this one's going to have to be the lesson one that I'm going to do while I'm out here. <clears throat> for the, uh, I've had a request to talk about the Bema seat, so we're going to do that in a, in a class. But anyhow, this is for the Camping well, in one series, I have a small backpack. You need to be able to bring some things with you. Um, I'll go over that in just a second. I've got my hiking poles. I have a bad knee, so I have to watch how I step. And it's like having a cane. You use it to steady yourself or you use it to uh, protect yourself from stepping wrong. And I also have a brace in my pack that I can put on if I absolutely need to. <clears throat> it's not comfortable. It's got metal stays in the side that make it very hard for me to move. I'm hobbling if I walk with that, <clears throat> so I'm not going to use that. Anyhow, I'm going to find a place to sit down, and we're going to kind of go over what I brought with me. This is a very developed park. The trails are very, very good here. I don't have to worry about getting too far lost. I know pretty much where I'm at. I'm going to basically circle the park, so 
worst comes to worst and I think I'm lost, all I got to do is using the GPS of this, I can find my way back to the center of the park where they have roads and I can get around that way. But while I'm out here, I wanted to show you what I've got with my pack. Uh, my pack has pouches on the side that I can put water in. And you can put, you know, whatever you like to drink, Gatorade, whatever. I found that if I sweeten the water with something, I drink them too fast. I have to still take in the right amount of liquids, but uh, if I flavor them, uh, I could sit down in one setting and drink all the water I've got and not have any of the rest of the hike. So I just drink regular water. Um, you also want to bring some food. Let me see if I can get this open while I'm talking. You don't need a lot, you know, some protein bars, breakfast bars, whatever you can bring with you. Um, personally, I just, you know, I just bring crackers. Um, this is a quick little short hike. It won't take very long. Um, I've also got, like I said, I got my brace in here. Uh, I have a soft brace as well that I can put on my knee if I start feeling some twinging. I've got my Bible in here, and I've got my phone stand. I've got an extra charger for my phone if I get out and I find that I've got no signal left. I'm bouncing all over the place trying to put this thing together. Ah, sorry. I've got multiple pouches on this, so... So, like I said, I've got a, a brick for my phone. Not that I would ever use them, but I have playing cards. Sometimes I hike with other people and we might stop. Um, of course, I have a cable to go with my brick in case I want to charge something. I've got some wet wipes in there and a small patch, pouch, <coughs> and let's see what else. Oh. I've even got a toothbrush and toothpaste in here. So. Okay, that's enough of bouncing you around. Sorry about that. I'm just doing this right on the trail. I'm seated on a fallen tree. And so this is going to just tack on to the, the last video that I did and I'll go ahead and upload that here in a little bit and then I got to sit down and talk about uh, the Bema seat. Everyone's judged, Christians and the world, but we have our own special seat and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, when you go out to a campsite, hiking is one of the fun things you can do. If you can't walk more than 20 feet, just walk around your campsite. If you know Every little bit you do helps. If you can only hike a half a mile, they've got trails that do that. You can take the longest trail that's 100 miles long and just walk in a half a mile and turn around and walk back. You don't have to do anything more than what you're capable of. But push yourself a little bit because as you do, you will find that you will get better at what you're doing. But take water. Take something to eat. I've got my cell phone. If you know, if you're really concerned about things like that, you could, you know, take your take a whistle. If you know how to use it, take a compass. I have a compass on my phone. Uh, sometimes in the trees it doesn't work very accurately, but it gives me a general direction. I can also look at the sun. We're in the northern hemisphere. The sun is going to be to the south of us as it arcs across the sky. So you can learn certain tricks. Stay on the trails. I think I will mention this so many times you get tired of it. If you have a problem and you're on a trail, somebody will find you. If you wander off cross country and you're going where you shouldn't go, uh, I passed a sign on here that, where there was a little trail going off in one direction and it said private property. That doesn't need to be defined any more than that. Don't go there. So, enjoy nature. You may or may not see any wildlife while you're out here. It depends on the time of day. I haven't seen any 
deer since I've been at this park. The last park I was at, I saw deer every day. Each place is different. And there's probably a place where they're all, all gathered. They know where it's safe. They know where the people are and they don't, you know, wildlife doesn't like being around people. And that needs to stay that way. Don't feed animals because then they learn to, to be nice to people and that's not good. Okay, I got to get back on my trail. Should I say happy trails? <laughs> okay. God bless everyone. Have a great day. When the weather gets nice and the temperature's nice, you can open up your windows all the way around. Whether you have a tent like mine or a smaller tent, you will have windows you can open up. I like that I can see all the way around because I have windows on all the sides. And you know, I've got a camping chair in there if I want to go inside and sit. I have a, a bench over there that I can go sit on. I've got a fire ring. Here's where I get my power. And the water's on the other side, I'll show you. You have a box that you can open up. You can plug in 30 amp or 20 amp, I think those are. Regular AC plugs, I'm using two. And there's breakers at the top, so make sure you got them turned on. Otherwise, you may not have any power. And on the other side, there's a water spigot. Uh, some of them have traditional ones that you're used to. A lot of the parks have these. You simply have to lift the arm uh, and then go above to push down the, to get water. If you have a hose, you can screw it onto the end of this. Just lift that all the way up and put the pressure on. Make sure that you have if you're in an RV, well, frankly, you can get the same kind of equipment for tents, a pressure valve and a filter. And if you do both, you won't overpressurize anything, blow out pipes if you got an RV, and you have a filter that will make sure that the water is clean and drinkable. And of course, I'm tying my bike up to it because it's a nice, strong pull. This is a nice campsite. Some of them aren't quite as nice, but they're pretty close. They've all got these wood frame borders on them to help hold the, the dirt in. This one has a fancy ring, fire ring. Obviously, you want to keep your fire inside that. That's what it's for. And you can barbecue on that, and that you can raise up and down. Some don't have that. It's just a fire ring. But from here... We can see down, there's somebody out on the lake. I don't know if I can get to him. Yeah, you can see him way out there on a boat. When you look at your campsites, okay, I don't know what I did. I changed something and I shouldn't have. Okay, that's better. I don't know what I changed, but I changed some setting when I touched the screen. Anyhow, when you're looking at your sites, it's helpful if you are familiar with the layout. Those down here are the 100 level campsites, 101, 102, etc. And they're on the lake, so those are premium sites. You pay a little bit more. I'm up here in the 600s where there's a lot of tents. You can still get a small RV in here or a van but they're basically designed for, for smaller size. You don't pay as much. There's the restrooms. I don't have to go very far. And they have showers in them. And I don't think you can see it from here, but I have a trading post. Way in the distance. Let me see if I can zoom in and not mess it up again. That's the trading post, that building there. So I don't have very far to go and I did it again. There we go. I know how to set it back now. I changed some kind of a resolution. In any case, this is my campsite.
and it's nice out right now. It's cool. People have got their fires going. You can see the smoke coming up. If you've got a lot of people on the weekend, that can become unbearable. Everybody has a campfire. You know, there's one there going on. There's one in here. I can see the smoke. But the wind's blowing away from me, so I'm okay. If it was blowing this way, it might be a little bit too, too much. But look at the beauty of this. And there's plenty of extra sites right now for camping. Some places are full. You get closer to the city, they're full. So when you check these places out, you want to basically put in your dates and how many days you want to stay. And then if you don't find one, tell it to look for similar sites. And just, it will tell you. You can, you can look at the availability or you can look at the map. The map will tell you what sites are open during the rains that you've got. And if you look at the availability, you can also see, but it's more of a list, so you've got to go through it. If your range is too big, start off smaller. A lot of times, weekends fill up and weekdays don't. So I've budgeted in uh, the ability to stay in a, a motel for a weekend if I need to. And then I can go back to camping during the week. It depends on where you're at. When school's over, when, when summer's over and back to school, there'll be more sites open. Because this kid's around here today, I've seen him out on the lake, so when school's over, they'll be back, uh, when summer's over, they'll be back in school. Okay, and you can see that I can see all the way through. And to tell you the truth, this is the first time I've had my tent all the way open, because it's been hot. But it's nice out here today. Okay, I'm going to stop this so I can start building some other fire. Okay, everyone, this is the antenna for the Wii Boost. Uh, it's designed to go on the side of buildings, or that bracket can attach to a, a pole with some attachments. Um, but bunging it to a tree is all I need to do because it just has to point in that direction because that's where the cell tower is. How do I know that? I have an application on my phone that tells me where the tower is. It tells me where the strongest signal is and I just point it at that direction. But anyhow, all I do is take the cable and run it into the tent. And yeah, my tent's a little messy, but that's what I had ants in here, so I had to go through and clean up. This little Wii Boost adapter here, you plug the cable in and it amplifies it and rebroadcasts it via this little antenna here. So I just point this in the general direction of where I'm seated and it sends the signal out and that's all I have to do.